So today's lesson is about a very important topic as we move beyond one-way designs and one-way analysis of variance, and that is the meaning of statistical interaction. So when we design more complex experiments, we're usually asking more interesting and more uh, Com slightly more complex questions, as I hinted at with previous videos. Um, and the, f the way in which those questions are more complex is that they involve statistical interaction. So I want to really um, emphasize the importance of the meaning of statistical interaction. And the way I want to do that is to go back to our very simple um, <clears throat> experimental design where we have two factors. <clears throat> so we have factor one on the left side. We have factor two on the top. Um, and we have two, just two levels of each one. So again, let's imagine our situation where we maybe have um, uh, sucrose and it's absent or present. And then maybe our second factor is fructose and we're just kind of imagining a growth medium here where we've we've got petri dishes with a growth medium in it and we've put you know some organism growing in it and we're measuring some dependent variable like growth over some specified period of time so let's imagine that um, you know we we've calculated our individual um, observations and we get a y bar of two for example for our control and we get a y bar of uh, just for instance 10 okay for our plus fructose still no sucrose neither of these uh, and let's imagine that um, with our plus sucrose um, but no fructose we get a mean of six I'm just showing the means here not the observations that went into these means because really um, it's these don't matter the, the actual observations don't matter in terms of our interpretation of what's going on here. So, so let's think about our orthogonal contrast that we'd be making, you know, if we were looking at the sucrose effect. Um, what would it be? What, what is the sucrose effect here? Well, going from minus to plus sucrose over here, uh, the sucrose effect is plus four, right? You go from two, a mean of two to a mean of six. Um, must be that adding sucrose increases our growth by four. And likewise, in the presence of fructose, adding sucrose does exactly the same thing. So, so the sucrose effect, we can actually quantify it. The sucrose effect <laughs> is plus four, right? Okay, and likewise, we can examine the fructose effect. So going from a a Zero, minus fructose to a plus fructose state, going from here to here, we add eight, right? And this, if we go from a minus fructose state down here where we have sucrose and we add fructose so that we now have both, um, we also go uh, to be plus eight. So what is the fructose effect? Fructose effect is obviously uh, plus eight. It adds eight to our growth. <laughs> okay, so this is our estimate based upon this of what um, our main effects, in fact, um, what we've just quantified here so far are the main effects of fructose and sucrose. So the main effect of sucrose, when we add it, is plus four. The main effect of fructose is plus eight. Now, um, I hinted in a previous video that you know these are not the only possible contrasts, right? We have four groups, A minus one or three is our degrees of freedom. We've used one degree of freedom comparing the fructose groups, and we've used another degree of freedom comparing the sucrose groups. Um, so that's two, but we have another degree of freedom somewhere, and I hinted at that time that it's actually um, comparing this diagonal the main diagonal with this uh, cross diagonal here um, that is the third possible contrast we could make and um, if you look at at this situation so it doesn't matter um, whether there's sucrose present or not adding fructose adds eight 
right? So it's a plus eight regardless of the sucrose level. And likewise, uh, the sucrose effect is plus four regardless of whether there's fructose there or not. Um, so what that means is that those uh, effects are completely additive. That means they, you don't need to know what the sucrose level is to know what the fructose effect is and, and vice versa. So let me repeat that. So you don't really need to know what the level of the other factor is in order to understand the effect of the factor you're interested in. Uh, and you can, and it's, it's reversible, so it's the same the other way around as well. <clears throat> now what that means is that these um, diagonals actually add up to exactly the same value. In other words, if I take <laughs> um, you know, the sum of these, or, or if I want the mean, <laughs> okay, the y bar for this diagonal is what? 8. And the y bar for this diagonal is what eight right 14 plus 2 divided by 2 um, so if I contrasted these diagonals there's no difference right there's no difference between these diagonals and in fact that is um, the uh, result of the perfectly additive effects of fructose and sucrose on these means we don't have a difference in the effect of fructose depending on the level of sucrose. If we did, we would get different means here. All right, so let's let's create that situation. Let's imagine instead of eh, let me redraw this. Okay, everybody got this down. You might want to um, write it down real quickly or pause the video. All right, so let's re redo this now. I have my sucrose effect minus plus, my fructose effect minus and plus. And let's imagine that we still have the same main effects here when we have none of the other factor. Whoops, I think I had six here, didn't I? Uh, let me uh, grab my eraser. There we go. All right. So, um, so we have a plus eight effect of adding fructose, and we have a plus four effect of adding sucrose. But now let's break down uh, the additivity. Let's imagine that adding um, fructose in the presence of sucrose, um, oh, we could say it does more than be additive. So what would that be like? That would be like 20, for example. <laughs> okay, so now, um, Going from ten, uh, no sucrose to sucrose is a plus 10. And we can easily see when we look at these means that the effect of adding sucrose depends upon whether there's fructose there or not. And you know, just by doing that, we also find that um, the effect of fructose, adding fructose, depends on the level of sucrose. So interactions are non-additivity. That is, we cannot predict the value of this mean knowing the effect when we don't have the other factor. We have to know the level of the other factor in order to be able to predict this. Okay, so the effect of adding, the, let me write this down, the, we'll, we'll talk about the, how to express this. The effect of adding fructose depends on the sucrose level. In other words, we can't predict what the effect of adding fructose will be without knowing the level of sucrose. And, and it's vice versa. It's symmetrical. Okay, so, um, so that's, that's the meaning of interaction. It is that we have to know the levels of both factors in order to be able to predict the outcome because the effect of adding one depends upon the level of the other. All right, and so what we've done here is we've, we've now created a situation, let's look at these diagonals again, where the mean for this diagonal is eight, but the mean of this diagonal no longer equals eight. 
Okay, it equals 11. 20 plus 2 divided by 2. So there is a contrast here. And this is, in fact, contrast 3. Um, so um, what our real question is when we ask about interaction, though, is not um, are these means equal, but are these means significantly different? In other words, with contrast 3, we would normally expect these means not to be zero just due to random variation. But the question is, are are these differences elevated above and beyond what you would expect based upon chance? So just like our other con contrasts, we can construct an F test for contrast three, which will permit us to determine whether the numerator variance, right, which contains variation due to differences among means, uh, is elevated significantly above the within group variance such that we can conclude uh, an F value that higher higher would not be um, obtained by chance more often than our alpha, whatever it happens to be. Okay, so um, uh, we will be talking in future videos about uh, how to state interaction and how to graph interaction because uh, there are many ways of doing that, um, and how to depict it. Um, but it's very important that you understand at a base level what this non-additivity implies. It simply implies that you cannot predict um, the effect of um, multiple factors without knowing the level of the other, of a single factor without knowing the level of some other factor. Now, as you can imagine, um, with complex designs, you could go to three-way interaction, four-way interaction, and so forth. And we'll talk about those and how to state them and so forth. But things could get complex very fast. Um, but at the very base of it, it has to do with the effect of one factor, changing levels among one factor on our y variable, depending upon the level of the other factor involved in our experiment. All right, think about that. It's a really important concept as you interpret more complex designs. Okay.